Hello! I just woke up a few minutes ago and this is the perfect starting point for this video. We will talk about surrealism and dreamscape. This is an answer or rather a contribution to Fon Trotten, Chepe Le Pepe, uh, Surrealism Month. So I dug deep into my library, uh, trying to collect different ideas about how to do surrealism in a in a setting um, for true twin. In fact, there is a, there is a world called a Nevermore which uses the idea of a dreamscape and I did different research about about it and I, I tried to uh, to stay as generic as possible so I use GURPS as a, as a starting point for the research but uh, the ideas here will be of course applicable in any game system that's one of <laughs> a particularity of, of GURPS being GURPS so um, let, let's start with surrealism. What, what is it? Um, uh, this, uh, this style is, uh, this genre is familiar to me because I, I studied visual art when I was in college. And uh, of course I'm uh, familiar with the painters and the writers. Uh, I did not, I did not uh, study it very hard and long but uh, I know about it quite a bit especially on the visual side so uh, surrealism is a, is a contrast if I take the definition it's a, it's a contradiction between what's going on in the real world and the dreamland there's a contrast um, so uh, for example, in reality, we have uh, gravity, we have a, a, a night cycle, a night day cycle. We have things we, have, we are familiar with. And in surrealism, if you, uh, if you watch on YouTube just uh, a, a exempt of, uh, of, for example, the movie done by Salvador Dali, The Chien Andalou, uh, it's a disconnected series of disturbing image uh, with uh, insect crawling around and, and uh, phallic and sexual symbolism in shadows of things. And so uh, if you want to uh, do this approach uh, in a gaming fashion because this style this genre can easily and quickly become a poetry uh, contest at your table or it can easily become uh, you doing a, a, an introspective performance theater, uh, theatrical performance without any gaming element if you if you want to align this as a game these these suggestions here could be useful uh, to you. So of course, if you uh, want to do this genre, you will have to use symbolism and visual to explain uh, to explain uh, meanings. So you will have to uh, maybe use uh, a tablet to show people pictures of very specific stuff, very specific moment in your story. Uh, visuals you could do uh, drawings to uh, to uh, try to invoke what's going on in the story so first of all this genre is not easily done because of role-playing game being role-playing games being this media where we have to uh, to ping-pong ideas with each other and, and most role player uh, are used to uh, to uh, kill shit and Take their stuff. So uh, it's hard to do also because 
players may miss clues or interpret clues differently than yourself. Um, symbolism is not universal, in my opinion. Um, for example, the symbol, the swastika, the Nazi, Nazi party symbol, was at a point in time a good luck charm in Tibet. And who knows if some ancient civilization didn't, didn't use the swastika for, <laughs> for their equivalent of the Red Cross or, uh, <clears throat> or uh, any other meaning we could give to this symbol. So uh, in a way it looked like a foot on a wheel, it could represent somebody walking. So just because of symbolism being very personal and subjective, player can could miss all kinds of information yet that you have worked beforehand and you would have done it for nothing. So unless your players are uh, really versed in the same symbolism as yourself um, or maybe if one of the characters has a, have a, a dreaming dream interpretation skill or psychology skill or symbolism skills you could here and there help this player by passing notes and, and such for example, if you describe uh, the, the PCs are walking into a corridor and on the walls, on the dry, dry wall, uh, the paint, the paint start to drip in like a, in a candle-like fashion in slow motion, maybe in reverse. Uh, to, to, and you want to express in your mind, you want to express that the person they are going into the dreams of is a, is a sad person, and it represents it, it, the, the person's tears. Well, the player may think differently. They, they can they can they can think, oh my God, it's going to rain inside, or maybe they will not even take note of this. So, and if you start to explain every symbol that you get, that you uh, use in your game, that's kind of against the point of creating this surrealism experience. Uh, you, you could take the the Dali approach and try to shock your player, but that's not a good idea either. So, in in hopes of um, as much as, as you want to include very unreal material in your game, you have to know that since it's not very real, it will have this, this subjective and detached level. Players will not get involved in, in purely abstract situation if you start describing a triangle making love to a novel and and they have a baby polyhydron and, and and it's 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 too much abstract you have to to start uh, using reality in some way to contrast maybe they can talk to a guy and you have a pyramid for his head and 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 you create this NPC as any other NPC you would create normally, but he had a pyramid at, at his head. The game Numenera comes to mind when, uh, if you want to create uh, mysteries and, and surrealistic uh, setting, uh, they have very good suggestion in the book to, uh, for this, uh, this effect. Uh, if I go on a more technical side using GURPS uh, rule, I would say that I have found um, four approach to do uh, this kind of genre. First approach, the dreaming skills that will you will find in the basic set. So it's a it's a, a based a skill based on will the stat will, 
and its default to uh, will minus six. So if uh, an untrained person were to try to uh, control their dream or defend against uh, oniric entity that would try to do do yourself uh, 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 try to intervene in your dream uh, that would that that person will use uh, would use a will minus six and uh, it's a hard skill so uh, if you want to have your your equal level in uh, in will you will have to spend uh, four point to uh, to be uh, equally uh, competent as your will stat. So the dreaming skill, uh, a success allow you to experience vivid dream as they say in the book um, about the subject of your choosing. So you could go to s just go to sleep and try to remember stuff, uh, relive a scene of the past. Um, but it can also be uh, something else. In a sense, this is a lucid dreaming skill. So you have it's about keeping control of your dream, uh, knowing where you are in the dream, uh, that, that you are in a dream. So if you are in a... Uh, people, people on the inter internet that uses a technique to lucid dream have a cue. Uh, and your character could have a cue to know that he is in a, in a dream. A girl on the internet uh, said that when she's flying, that's our signal that she is in a dream. So you can have uh, all kind of technique. Uh, people doing this uh, lucid dreaming techniques uh, say that they have two approach to it: the wild and the mild. The wild is the wake initiation of lucid dream, and the mild is the mnemonic inducing uh, of lucid dreams. So you could <laughs> you could uh, specialize. Uh, your, your dreaming skill if you want to go very uh, detailed about it but the dreaming skill is just about controlling what's happening in the dream now if two players are entering the same dream are they really in the same dream in your game is the dream just in in one's person's head or is it possible that there is some dimension where dreaming occurs at a, a common uh, a subconscious uh, a common subconscious level is it young the psychologist who invented the, the, the idea well I'm not an expert uh, yeah so uh, so starting from reality if this is a biological just a biological thing, you could just go with the dreaming skill and pretty much uh, the skill right from the book could be just the mechanic you need for all your dreamscape and surrealism uh, meaning. Maybe add some symbolism skills or occultism or well second approach psychic powers you could use uh, the power astral projection that is described in uh, GURPS Sinex uh, with a limitation, uh, maybe uh, minus 20% or minus, minus 10%. That is, your power or your astral projection, your astral uh, body, can only escape your, your flesh and enter the dreamscape. So. Uh, People who are doing astral projection uh, tell us about two major uh, uh, technique. One that I, uh, one that one that one that is you you just get out of your body and you start exploring the real world. And the other one is going to what is known as the astral planes, so they are other worlds. And maybe one of this, these worlds is the dreamscape, and maybe you can just project there. And uh, that could be a way to do it. Uh, a, favorite, uh, a favorite way of doing this, in my opinion, 
would be in this book, Psionic Powers. These are uh, a different way of doing Psionic Powers and GURPS. They are very, very much like the third edition uh, Psionic book. Uh, in GURPS now, the, the Psionic Powers are advantages and disadvantages and with limitation. And they, they are what we call vanilla power in, uh, in the GURPS basic book. So this is an alternate uh, way of doing it that is remind, reminiscent of the other uh, edition. And in this edition, you have a, a dream control power. And for me, this is a better way to do it because it lists all kind of advantages that you can, uh, you can use as a, as a way of mechanically simulating uh, an approach to the dreamscape and surrealism, and especially if this, uh, if especially is if the dreamscape is a uh, like a physical place where minds can go to, or uh, if you can use dream to affect other people. So I'm gonna list an example of uh, all the powers the uh, the list under this that would be appropriate to, uh, to uh, dream projection. You have dream projection, reshape dream, uh, affliction, you could you could make somebody really, really, really tired by affecting their mind uh, while they are sleeping, so they, they, they have problem to wake up. So it's good, it's good. It could be very cool for an entity to, uh, to have this uh, offensive power. Uh, you could have a power of detect sleepers. Maybe you can detect the people who are dreaming. Uh, you could do fatigue attack, healing. Uh, you could heal people while they sleep. You could have uh, the advantage of less sleep. You don't need sleep as much. Um, that would be great for uh, somebody who would protect himself from getting uh, attracted too much in the dreamscape. If the guy doesn't need just four hours of sleep, maybe it's more easy for him to come back to reality after a long period of uh, a deep uh, state of, of dreaming. Uh, you could do mind probe, mind read, mind shield to protect yourself from telepathy and, and intrusion of the mind and mind scanning. You could uh, go the uh, the paranormal way with oracle. You could and you could you could meet some meaningful spirit on the other side, like uh, totem spirit or spirit guide or angels or or ancestors that try to give you messages. And, and this oracle power give you that ability to have. Uh, you can link also all kind of. Psionic power like precognition, psychometry, and postcognition, in fact, uh, or uh, yeah, like like a, like a scry, or uh, but staying in this very niche, <laughs> if I can indulge a bit, uh, yeah, uh, you could go uh, powers like uh, telesand terror especially good if you're, you you want to design a, an entity that can scare the crap of, out of dreamers and uh, visualization uh, it's an advantage in GURPS where you visualize something <clears throat> a situation where you're good and you're, you're, you're successful and uh, then you roll, a, you roll a will or IQ and uh, if you succeed you have a, a slight bonus when this situation arrived, because you visualized it. So uh, this uh, psionic powers is very uh, good way for me to to do it. Uh, quickly, two two other approach: the jumper approach. Jumper is an advantage that allow your character to jump between worlds. So f if Dreamscape is like uh, Arcadia or Gaia, you know the typical. Uh, fey or fairy uh, land on the other side uh, of the moon or 
you you turn around the next corner the next apple tree to the left you you go and boom you you, you enter uh, Arcadia uh, jumper would be a good uh, idea if if the power is limited between reality and dreamscape only uh, this is no uh, not a limitation in the in the system it, it worth nothing but the power itself jumping is a hundred points advantage so it's quite something you could you could limit it uh, during uh, you could limit this power to uh, lower the cost of course and uh, another uh, approach to dreamscape is the high tech way because in the future and if in your game you're very realistic about it, you cannot have dreams if you don't have brains. Uh, a rock cannot be real in a in a in a in a sense, in a materialistic sense. You need a brain to have a dreams or a consciousness or maybe a subconsciousness. So uh, the uh, ultra tech approach would be to use uh, gadgets, to use technology to control and uh, to play with your dreams a little bit more. So uh, this approach would be mo most easy on character builds because you would not you wouldn't have to create powers or model some 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 stuff. You just have to describe what the machine can do, what is the tech level of it. Is it available at your current uh, tech level? Uh, is there a company or an inventor that have this kind of technology? And that's it. So uh, in the book, they list uh, three gadgets that I uh, noted. Uh, dream games, uh, tech level nine uh, dream games. Um, we are currently uh, in an information digital era that is tech level eight. So it could be possible in a near future, according to this book, that we could have dream games, total virtual reality world where we can uh, indulge in fantasies and, and, and different world. So the dreamscape or surrealism effect could be in the virtual reality. Uh, one further step in, uh, in technology, tech level 10, you have a dream teacher. A dream teacher is a software that teaches you as you sleep. Uh, it creates simulation during your your sleep to re reinforce aspect of a skill or to uh, present you new situation where your character can learn. So you, so it's it's quite possible that your character could uh, perfect his his kung fu while while sleeping by uh, fighting Bruce Lee and <laughs> being teached. Uh, about uh, Kung Fu and Wing Chun and Jeet Kune Do just by sleeping and training during the day and and during the night perfecting those, those techniques. Um, at uh, THL 11 you have Dream Net and Dream Nets are pretty scary and pretty uh, it's a it's basically it's a prison it's a jail where you you are forced in a state of sleep and the, the victim cannot perceive that she is in a, re, in a, re, a virtual reality. So our mind is like locked into a, 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 a dream net, a, a, a net that, that prevent our consciousness to, uh, to, uh, to be awake, uh, to, to be uh, so I would uh, end this very long video with a quick list. So in your game, does your PC have powers in the dreamscape or the other world or in their dreams? Have they power? Are these power meaningful? Is it possible for them to construct a dream, maintain a dream, changing a dream, shaping a dream, attacking, defend, is it possible? If yes, maybe you will need like the second approach, maybe psionic powers and or the dreaming skill um, or training into uh, 
the field of, uh, of dreaming or or rather would your PCs be defenseless a la Call of Cthulhu would they be at the mercy of what's going on in the in, in the dreamscape is is the dreamscape dangerous for, for consciousness or uh, are you capable of seeing something in the dreamscape and dying from, from die from it or is it the, the or what's what's the consequences of what's the worst consequences that you can have in your game is it just fatigue more fatigue is it the incapacity of incapability of waking up so I would end this video with uh, of course uh, a reference to Chepe Le Pepe Fontraden video I will put the description just below the, the clip I would end this video with a I'm totally lost in my <laughs> and I'm already at 26 minutes that that's insane I must go to work and oh man that's very surreal as a situation go um, okay if I if I'm if I'm f finding my train of thoughts I, I will add notes to this video so uh, See you next time, and uh, happy dreaming, and happy gaming, and uh, happy surrealism.